Welcome back troglodytes to the Troglis Guitar Show. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to properly request a return on a guitar that wasn't quite as described. In this situation I had an SG Custom shipped to me without a case. I had real concerns of it getting broken like the last one. However, it did arrive in one piece. However, there was a hidden headstock repair on this guitar. I tell you, I think I'm 0-3 on these SG Customs. Alright, so in this situation, what do you do? Now this one was purchased on eBay, so I simply went to my order details page and I'm going to request to return the item. You could also do a contact seller, either way works just fine. A do not is leave negative feedback, because as soon as you open fire against the seller, their willingness to help out usually decreases a lot. Give them the benefit of the doubt regardless of the situation. Now for the return reason, I usually go doesn't match description or photos. And then you're going to want to write a message to the seller that isn't accusatory. Don't say you didn't disclose this headstock repair. You're terrible. Send me a return label. Don't do that. It makes the situation really awkward for the seller. Now they could be a scammer trying to pull one over on you or they really just might not have known. So you want to be as polite as possible. Avoid using the word you. That automatically gets someone in the defensive mode and then you're going to be fighting with the seller instead of working together to create a solution. Alright so I have my message now. First greet them and then let them know that you're not upset with them. This is a great way to get the seller on your side to reach an amicable solution. And then I told him the reason for this. Unfortunately this guitar has a previous headstock repair. Now I had previously messaged the seller before paying for this guitar asking him if there's been repairs and he replied with there are zero breaks or cracks. So this guy likely did not know this was there. And to be perfectly honest, I can see how he missed this. He should have been a little bit suspicious, but without a blacklight, you can't actually see the break and repair line. And that's kind of what I told him in this next one. But then I showed him the areas that you can see under regular lighting situations. And then I pointed out while using the blacklight, you can see the repair line. The next part of the message, I suggest asking for a return label if you don't want it at all. Or if you think you might be interested but for a different price, you can let them know what your expectations would be at that point. Now there's a lot of scammers out there that'll buy things from you and then ask for a partial refund afterwards. That's why I usually offer up two options and let them choose. I can either return it and they can sell it again knowing full well what the guitar is, or if they're just done with it and they want to take a reduced value for it, I'm also cool with that. If a seller's a good guy, they're apologetic instantly, I'll usually actually help them sell the guitar. That's a win in my book, because I still get to review the guitar, people still get to see it, and then somebody gets an awesome player's grade guitar. And the most important thing is attach photos. eBay lets you do 10, you could do as many as you want on reverb or send additional through messages. But don't just say, yeah, there's a break or a crack or there's a twist in the neck. Describe it with photos because as a seller, I hate it when people say there's an issue with the guitar and they can't prove it with photos. Because most times the sellers don't know there is an issue with the item, so it helps for them to visualize it. Something else that's also good is to get the serial number in the photo if you can. That way you can prove it's the same guitar. That's another common scam. They'll buy the guitar and they have a similar broken guitar that they'll send you photos of in order to get money back. So I'm going to go ahead and send this request to the seller and see what happens. Sometimes guys are nice and apologetic. Sometimes they get rude and defensive and it's a pain in the butt. It's my least favorite part of doing all this. All right, so I initially sent that request late on a Friday. Now, please keep in mind, a lot of times when you buy a guitar online, it might be a business you're buying it from. And a lot of businesses don't operate on the weekends. So give them three or four days to give you a response. 
If you don't hear from them after three business days, well, you're probably gonna have to fight to get it to be returned and have eBay get involved. But in this situation, the next business day, they got back to me, they accepted the return. They didn't say anything about the whole situation. They just sent me the return label, so I sent it back to them. Now, if you ever have a seller wanting you to pay the return label, don't accept that. The only reason why a buyer should ever have to pay for return shipping is if it's simply because they changed their mind or they can't afford the purchase after all. So I packed the guitar up the same way they sent it to me. I shipped it back to them. They got it. They ended up relisting this guitar saying it might have a headstock repair. That kind of made me upset because it clearly has a headstock repair, but at least now the buyer knows there is a possibility of it. So I hope you learned how to properly handle this situation. Basically, treat others how you want to be treated. Be respectful and polite, give them the benefit of the doubt until proven otherwise, and then hopefully you can get it returned and that headache will be out of your life. Thank you for watching Troglodytes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.